Hello everyone, this is my 2006 GMC Chevy Silverado 5.3 liter and it's been idling terrible uh, through a code a couple of times and as soon as I plugged in my Autel uh, diagnostic tool I knew exactly what to chase without even going and looking for it because I've had this problem before. So I'm going to show you what the problem is, and then I'm going to show you how to diagnose it with your tester, with your code reader. So I just added this piece of rubber here and these two fuel line clamps. Um, this is a vacuum hose, and I don't know if you can see it down there on the other end when I move this. You can just see right down here, I had done this before, and that is for uh, the same vacuum line at the other end. It was leaking. So engine runs quite rough at idle. At speed, you don't even notice it, but uh, um, it is messing with your controls and fuel uh, consumption because this vacuum leak. So I've put this on and had repaired it, but I'm gonna show you uh, how to diagnose this because it's incredible uh, how, much, uh, how easy it is to diagnose when you understand uh, fuel trims in particular on our uh, onboard computer. So what fuel trims are, are values in the computer that it's adding fuel or subtracting fuel from what it was normally expected to operate as. So um, normal operation fuel trims are close to zero. However, when there's a problem or it's not running correctly, your oxygen sensors, etc., are saying, the mixture is too rich coming out of the exhaust then it trims back to a negative on fuel if it's too lean it trims up to positive so i have uh, like i said an autel tester here and we'll have to ignore the um, beeping of my key that's in the ignition okay so i started the vehicle again this is the autel tester so what i'm going to do here now is uh, we're just gonna hit the button here to select OK. Now, what I wanna do is look at live data. There's no codes, so I wanna look at live data. So I'm gonna select that. And it's gonna come up with its list of all the things that we can read. I want a custom list because I wanna graph uh, the fuel trim values. So, uh, I'm going to go down here and you can see there's a box left of each one. I'm going to select both short uh, both short term fuel trim values, short term fuel trim on the left side or bank one and short term fuel trim the other side. So I've now got both uh, short term fuel trims selected. Uh, I'm going to hit enter and it's showing me now the values. You can see the fuel trim values. Much easier to see now when I select the graphic. So. We're going to graph this. I hit it once, it shows me one of them. When I hit it again for the two graphic, it graphs me both fuel trims in live fashion. And you can see they're varying right now from zero to negative 0.8. This one is pretty well, well, negative two, whatever, but they're hovering around zero. It's back and forth. And that's how it should be because your oxygen sensors and uh, fuel injection is adjusting itself to stay around zero. So it kind of goes up and down all the time, same as the values of the voltage on your oxygen sensor. So uh, that's what we've got when it's running normally. Now I'm gonna go and create the problem I had by disconnecting that vacuum line. Okay, so I've reconnected the vacuum line and I've put a screwdriver sort of inside the line to simulate allowing air to escape just like it was when the line was cracked. So if you look now, you're going to see the top one is uh, varying up to 2.3, even higher sometimes, 3.1, 3.9, almost reaching 5. The bottom one is cycling upwards again now of 3, 4. So they're, before they were hovering very close to zero. Right now, they're back and forth and they're going up and down. And that's because the vacuum leak is letting air in, but it's bypassing the mass airflow sensor. So the engine doesn't know that that air is getting in. All it sees is the, the exhaust is too, is too lean, so it's adding fuel. So 
when I give it gas, I'm going to put my foot on the gas for a second here. And you can see as I pump and shoot the gas, the fuel trims drop considerably. Right down to zero, in fact. You can see the difference in the waveform. So you can see the waveform, they're right down around zero, even lower, below zero. Now when I let it sit here, they're gonna cycle back up again. It's gonna take some time. There they go, they're starting to come up. Engine's running rough. Fuel trim's coming back up, back up, and there we go. Now it's up five, 5.5. 5. So fuel trims have come right back up. These are short-term fuel trims. So to try and describe what's actually happening here and why the fuel trims are changing, I've got these two large sockets to try and uh, visualize what's happening. This Visualize this socket and this size as your throttle body and throttle opening. So this is how much air when you're wide open, this is what you can get. And we'll picture this as the vacuum line. So all the air coming into the engine is coming through this large opening and as you open the throttle this opening gets much larger when it's at idle this is almost closed off almost com or would be closed off and your idle air control is allowing a little air through so when you've got a vacuum leak say this size at idle when all of your air is shut off and so you've only got this little bit coming through this little tiny leak in the vacuum makes a huge difference and that's why at idle it's so running rough and it's adding so much more fuel because at idle with throttle closed this little vacuum makes a huge difference however when i step on the gas and the throttle opens up say the throttle's here now half open you can see that small leak is now almost insignificant compared to the amount of air coming through the engine the proper way so that's why stepping on the gas makes this problem essentially go away if in fact it's a vacuum leak. So I'll go back to the truck. Oh, now back here in the engine compartment. Again, this is the vacuum line here. And you can see right here, that fuel line clamp I've just put back on. So this little piece of rubber, uh, it's actually rubber, uh, high pressure fuel line. Uh, I've put that on and clamped it. So now I have repaired this vacuum line at both ends. So now we'll go start the truck We'll look at the fuel trims again, and uh, they should be hovering around zero without those high numbers, and giving it gas will not make the huge difference it was doing because now all the air is getting drawn in through uh, the air filter, and that's the mass airflow sensor. Okay, so here we are now. The vacuum line is sealed up and connected, and we're actually seeing uh, some slightly negative fuel trims. Uh, the engine has to readjust because it was disconnected. But you can see it's nowhere near what it was and it's not the extreme high values. So giving the engine gas now uh, is not going to bring it closer to zero. Uh, it's sitting, it's hovering, it's going back and forth across up and down over the zero line, uh, which is exactly you know where we want it to be. Very close to it anyway but you can see the negatives means and it pops back up. That's the way your oxygen sensor works and drives the system. So very easy to diagnose a vacuum leak with your short-term fuel trims. So if you haven't got uh, a tester, uh, an ODB2 tester, there's even Bluetooth dongles you can get and do it with your phone. Uh, they're inexpensive. I really like this uh, Autel tester. It's an ML629. I'm sure there are much fancier and better out there now, but it has all kinds of custom diagnostic information I can do with this tester for the specific vehicle. One of the issues that I was trying to diagnose, and this let me do it, was an airbag sensor issue, which you can't do with standard OBD2. You need vehicle specific information. So again, uh, Autel ML629, small, compact, not too complicated very handy and uh, i hope uh, this helps someone else if you've got a uh, a vehicle and it's idling rough but running fine uh, check your short-term fuel trims and it's very possible you have a vacuum leak it's a very common common problem rubber lines deteriorate etc 
I uh, hope this helps somebody. If you uh, like the video, please like it. It'll help other people find it. And if you don't mind, subscribe. That'll help me out. Thanks a lot.